Gonna get started in three minutes, so if you gotta grab a glass of water or take care of anything, now would be the time to do it. What do you, hey, I'm kind of curious as well, for the, those of you that are on, Chip, Christopher, uh, Damon, Daryl, Donna, Richard, Rick, Teresa, all you guys, what are you looking to learn tonight? Just to make sure I actually hit on what it is. Is there anything specific, the reason why you took time away from your family, your business, anything like that, the why you, what you specifically you want to make sure you walk away tonight uh, learning about podcasting? If not, if you just a general idea of what it is, that's great too, but I'm just curious. How to get sponsorships, okay, we'll talk about that. Rick, great question. Great question. You know, sponsorships are a direct byproduct, at least it's been my experience, and I think other podcasters would probably agree, of the amount of downloads you have. So you're, you're not gonna get, the, you're not gonna get the, uh, the sponsor of your podcast until you start showing them that you can actually get downloads of your show. And we'll talk about that for sure. So sponsorships, they range. I've been approached for sponsorships anywhere from $20 per 1,000 downloads of my show to $80 for 1,000 downloads of my show. So for example, if I got 10,000 downloads, a sponsor would pay you $800 for that or $50 for every thousand would be 500. But it varies. It just varies on who the sponsor is, how specific it is. I just had, uh, I just had lunch with a buddy of mine. Uh, a few days ago, and he was getting five thousand dollars a month from an exclusive sponsor, and he does he gets about a hundred and to one hundred and twenty thousand downloads a month of his show. Okay, so there's no exact science to it. Uh, if the sponsor is targeted, and it makes sense, and they're excited, if it if it's a hand and glove fit, you're going to get more money because it's more of a targeted uh, consumer. So. Let's see here, uh, Daryl, currently speaking at workshops, can you speak on podcast and get a greater reach? Or is it gonna take that much effort it will negatively impact getting live workshops booked? Let me see, can you speak on podcast and getting a greater reach? Or is it gonna take much effort? Well, podcasting is all about, I can tell you I've been booked to speak as a result of my podcast. Um, sold a lot of coaching and consulting a lot uh, as a result of my podcast. It's benefited my speaking business because it allows me to actually highlight what I talk about. Like I'll use, if somebody, if a promoter or someone who wants to book me on their stage wants an example of me speaking, I'll send them links to my podcast and have them get a feel for, uh, you know, what I talk about, the Everyday Saturday message, the, the voice, the tone, the inflection, the humor, the passion, things like that. So it's a, it's a unique animal and we'll definitely, we'll talk about it as well. Look, it's, it built my business. I mean, when I was broke, you know, I, in 2005, it's just, that was it. I had nothing but the podcast. So, you know, that's how I actually built my entire speaking career was right around podcasting, you know? So great question though. Great question. Keep them coming guys and girls. I will answer them as we can throughout the show or the show. I'm so used to podcasting, um, throughout the training, the webinar here. Do we need to be as dynamic as you? No, God, no, no. First of all, I, my show is about nothing, okay? My show is like, if you're familiar with Seinfeld in the 90s, it was a show about nothing. I, I, I grip it and rip it, man. I just let it rip for 10 to 12 minutes every day, have a good time, sometimes two or three times a day, and I'm done. And it just, it just resonates with my audience. Now, if you're teaching about you know, financial planning or real estate investing or, you know, blogging. At the, I mean, you you don't want to be me. I couldn't do a show on that. Nobody would respect me because I'm so off the rails, you know. So you, you need to mirror your audience energy level and their intellect. You know, I got 20 college credits. Most of them are gym and health class. So it's, you know, I ain't teaching on financial planning. That, no, you don't got to. Now, does it help to be dynamic? Well, of course, because you're going to keep the engagement of your audience. So even if you're talking about what would be perceived as a dry topic, um, you can still interject a little bit of humor and just talk like you're having a conversation with somebody at Starbucks, you know, friend of yours you haven't seen in a long time. You're excited to see him. And they ask, hey, what have you been up to, Daryl? What have you been up to, Jared, Donna? What do you got? What, you know, what have you been doing? You just talk. And that's what makes a great podcast. Um, it's unfiltered. It's raw. Those are the best shows. The worst podcasts are the ones that are scripted. It feels like somebody's reading. It feels like a, you're putting a square peg in a round hole. And you just can tell from a thousand miles away the person's trying way too hard to be, you know, a podcaster. You're just having a conversation, you know. 
Does it matter what you talk about? Teresa wants to know. It doesn't matter at all. A couple things that are important. You talk about what you want to talk about. You don't talk about something that you don't know anything about because you're going to run out of content. And I teach how to go find content so you never, ever run out. There's an endless reservoir of content out there for you to just dip into. And also, you can ask your audience. I ask everybody a lot on Twitter, Facebook, hey, what do you want me to talk about on my show? If you use user-generated content, then... Uh, you're engaging your audience, number one. And number two, it takes the pressure off you. You have to find things to actually talk about, you know? So let's do this. Let's show me, uh, show you a first few things I want to get over. How to build a huge tribe of loyal, adoring fans. Um, I want to go over, rather. Uh, position yourself as the expert within your niche. And have top thought leaders in your industry actually begging for your time. And yes, it happens. As well as paying you. Yes, it happens. And create amazing income with little effort, and I put an asterisk by all of these because none of this might happen, none of it. All right, it happened for me, it's happened for a lot of my students, it's happened for, you know, a lot of the top podcasters on iTunes as well, it's happened for them in a short period of time. But it is, um, you know, when you create amazing income with little effort, talking to me is not effort. It shouldn't be an effort for you either, you speak every day. This isn't public speaking. This is just hooking up a microphone and, and, and have a good time talking about a topic that you really want to talk about. So that is little effort, you know. And look, if, if there was nobody more fearful than I was about speaking and public speaking, I couldn't speak. I mean, I was a stutterer. So for me, speaking was a very large, large challenge for me. Um, podcasting has really helped me become a better public speaker. So when I speak in Australia or London or Toronto or something like that, it, you know, repetition decreases resistance. You know what I mean? If you do something over and over and over again, you're going to get really good at it. And podcasting will make you a better speaker. I'm going to show you how I accidentally built a million dollar brand with no money, no connections, no support, no website, because you don't need money. You don't need connections. You don't need any support, uh, whether it's your family or whether it's technical. <laughs> you know, when you put yourself out there, if you want to be successful, get used to being alone sometimes, all right? Because not everybody dreams as big as you do. Not everybody's as crazy as you do. Not everybody has these audacious goals like you do, you know? that just It can't be that way. The earth wouldn't be balanced if all of us on this webinar, if the whole world was like us. The world would be out of balance, okay? You're the dreamer. You're the doer. You're the entrepreneur. You're the, you're the crazy person who thinks really, really big. And uh, I'm going to show you how you can do something with, with that, with podcasting. And it, look, guys, let me just tell you, if this resonates with you, then move forward with it. Do it. If you're currently a podcaster and you jumped on this training because you want to maybe grab a few tips and do it a little bit better, that's good too. But just don't give up because somebody else thinks you should be doing something different. That's just, that's a recipe for disaster, no matter what it is, all right? Uh, and May 6, 2005, I, I quit my job. I was running a $90 million organization here in Cincinnati, and I just quit. Um, I'd been with the company 15 years. I was 37 years old. My daughter, Madeline, used to ask me, Daddy is tomorrow Saturday. Daddy is tomorrow Saturday. And it just got to me, you know. Um, I don't know. I don't know any other way to put it. It just got to me. So I told the boss I quit. And uh, I walked out of the corner office, but I didn't have any real plan. I just wanted to be a speaker. Didn't know what I was going to speak about. Had no clue, actually. But sometimes when you don't have any idea where you're going, it's not a really good place to be, especially when you got two kids and another one on the way, which I did in, at that period of time. But boy, when you get into gun-to-the-head mode of being successful, you really don't have a choice. Now, in my situation, in this particular circumstance, 11 years ago, I bought a Quiznos franchise, and that was a horrible decision. I went bankrupt, lost three hundred grand. Went back to my job that I quit and thought I was going to go on the, you know, the big speaking circuit. I ended up going back to work. They didn't take me back, though, in the corner office. They threw me in a cubicle making 39 grand a year. So I went from making 110000 base salary to making 39 grand a year. And it was humbling. Um, it sucked. I don't know any other way to tell it. But you know what? I started podcasting at that point in time because I didn't have any money. Um, I had no technical knowledge whatsoever. And back then, there wasn't like lead pages or Thrive themes or these ways where you can just drag and drop, you know, websites and build them on your own. You had to pay a designer, you know, to build HTML code and all that stuff. So um, the only way I knew how to get my message out was podcasting. So I started doing it. I learned how to do it. I was self-taught because I went to work every day with these guys right here. You, you may know some of these people, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, 
and Tony Robbins. I had their CDs in my car. And I had Zig Ziglar and Jim Rohn and Dr. Dennis Waitley and, you know, just all of these personal development people. I used to just pump their message into my mind because I was broke, but not broken. I was just really just in a bad spot. And it really changed my mindset. So I thought, geez, if they're doing this for me and helping me through these really difficult times, you can throw Joel Osteen in there as well when his first book, Your Best Life Now, came out. If you've never read that book, Your Best Life Now from Joel Osteen, you should read it. It's a really good book. And that came out, and uh, I was listening to his podcast as well. So I thought, heck, if these guys can help me, maybe I can help somebody. You know, just help them get through some tough times. So there's our family right there as a just kind of a basis point. I Like I said, that's from last Halloween. I live in Cincinnati. That's my wife, Angela. Uh, that's our oldest daughter, Madeline, Laura, and Paige. And that's our baby, Susan. Um I don't know if any of you know the story about our baby Susan. She was born at one pound. Let me just fire through. I was going to show you this kind of why I do what I do. But this is why I do what I do. Let me just skip way, way, way ahead. She was born August 17th, um, 2014. She weighed one pound. She was born at 24 weeks. Now, that's our photos of me and my wife in the NICU as she was continuing to grow and grow and grow. And that was her at 26 weeks when her eyes opened. An absolute miracle, guys. Absolute miracle. And that was her first birthday last August. And uh, she's re- she's now weighs close to 20 pounds. She breathes through a tracheostomy tube. You can see it right there. So she's on a ventilator at night. But how she develops her lungs is she breathes through that trach tube right there. So, <laughs> and she's got that devilish look to her, man. I wrote a book. Uh, about the whole journey. Um, You can pick it up on Amazon if you want to. It's in Kindle form as well as printed version. It's called One More Breath, uh, a story of hope and inspiration for those who feel they have none. So if you're in a tough spot financially, uh, maybe in a relationship, or maybe you've had challenges uh, with a baby that was born, uh, you know, and maybe it was a preemie, a NICU baby, anything, or you know somebody who's going through tough times, refer them to the One More Breath fan page on Facebook as well as the book. And I just did it to help people. Didn't do it to make any money. Just wanted to chronicle our journey from our baby that was born looking like that to where she is right now looking like that. And uh, it's an absolute miracle. So that's kind of why, you know, when you ask, what do I podcast about? This is what, these are the types of things that draw hundreds and thousands of downloads every month. And it's nothing that you can't talk about, whatever's going on in your life. Uh, your life is your life. Uh, what happens every day is it's, it's a story. You know, life comes to us in the form of a story. And, you know, when we were five years old, we would sit around, the teacher would read us a book in kindergarten or first grade, and we would want to, you know, we would be hanging on the teacher's every word, like, what's going to happen? What's the next page? Show. That's how you build a brand. You create a story that people want to know what's, what's on the next page, you know? What is it that you're going to talk about? And that's really what makes a successful podcast as well is telling a story to people. You know, you don't got to be anybody but you. That's the beauty of podcasting. You just be you. And people, I'll show you in a few minutes here how people find your show and how they subscribe to it. And it's really magical, man. I'm telling you, it really is a, it really is awesome. So why a podcast? You know, there's a, there's, there's a, there's photos right there. You know, I don't know how to explain it other than, you know, Daryl had asked, can this help my speaking career? You know, as you look at the Mari Smiths of the world, Bob Proctor, Robert Kiyosaki, Les Brown, Janet Atwood, John, John Asroff, and a host of other people I've shared the stage with, I've just been blessed to share the stage with these people. Um, it's all as a, um, It all traces back to my podcast because this is what I talk about when I speak. I talk about podcasting, how to build your message, how to get it out there. And come on, man, are you serious? Pinch me. I mean, sharing the stage with Bob Proctor, I used to go to work listening to this guy. He was like an idol of mine, Les Brown. You got to be hungry, you know, and this is what it's done for my career. And I'm not saying this is what's going to happen with your career because I don't know what you're going to do after tonight. But as big as you want to take this, as much of a thought leader as you want to be, it'll happen for you. It will, because if you're really passionate about it and you just want to talk for 10 to 15 minutes a day, that's all it takes. Nothing more than that. And just build a message around it. Build that story. You know, what's your story going to be? And just just share that story because One of the challenges that I face a lot in teaching podcasters, and this will happen to you when you launch your show, you're going to think, does anybody really want to hear my story? 
or what am I what am I going to talk about? I can think of you know four things to talk about, but that's about it. I think I'm going to run out. No, I'll teach you. It'll never happen. You will never run out of content. For example, you could host your own show like I do every day. You can host your own show once a week, once a month. You can co-host a show. You can do an interview platform where you interview somebody every day. Uh, like John Lee Dumas does, who's absolutely blown up with his show over the past few years, and Pat Flynn and all these great podcasters. Or you can interview somebody once a week or once a month. Again, it's a blank canvas. You can draw on it however you want. Uh, what I do is I do my own show, and I sell my own products on my podcast. I promote my own products. Um, I do affiliate marketing sometimes, meaning I'll promote somebody else's product with a unique affiliate link, and I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. There's so much you can do when you get the downloads. When you, okay, when you start podcasting, when you take it seriously, and I and look, it ain't much to do it seriously. We're talking a few minutes a day, guys. This you can commit. This is like saying I'm going to go to lunch once a day. All right, it's really that simple. Um, but when you get the downloads, I'll show you how to monitor those. But this is a look at my hosting company, uh, Blueberry, who I used to host, my, host, who I use to host my show, about a million five hundred thousand downloads so far over the past a eh, little over a year or so. And these are each one of the MP3s that I upload. This is, uh, for example, in March right now, where I have forty six thousand downloads. Uh, this will at midnight tonight probably be over fifty thousand. So on pace, it's March tenth. There's thirty one days in a month, so I'll probably have one hundred and fifty thousand downloads of my show this month. And advertisers would pay handsomely to piggyback on that show. They, you know, like we talked about, if you're going to get maybe $40 for every 1,000 downloads, what's $40 into 100 is 4,000. We're probably looking at 6,000, 7,000 a month I could make in sponsorships if I wanted to attract. But I make way more than that selling my own products and coaching. Does anybody sell coaching or consulting? Any coaches or consultants on the line tonight? Anyone that teaches any particular? Okay, cool. We got Linda, Daryl. Okay. See, what you can do is you can use your podcast to sell your coaching and your consulting or just strategy sessions. Teresa teaches. Okay. All of you probably teach something, I'm sure. Or if you don't now, you could if you learned how to teach it. Um, what you can simply do is have a call to action on your podcast to have people send you an email and, and for a free strategy session with you. That's how... Um, Again, I'm only going to teach you what I know how to do. Uh, there's other people I'm sure that may do other things, but you know, I've I've sold tens and thousands of dollars of coaching from people that send uh, an email to me with a subject line "free strategy session." That's it. Uh, where do a lot of my downloads come from? Uh, let's take a look here. The different platforms. Seventy percent of my downloads uh, this month, and this is pretty standard throughout all. Let me just get back up to the complete thing here uh platforms 61 percent. okay <clears throat> so about 641,000 downloads of my show so far have come through the ios iphone ipad app that's already on the phone okay what does that mean people are mobile you know what i mean like people are they're they're on the move with your show the next highest is windows android mac and then everything else, okay? So, guys, we're in a mobile society. I, I, you, you probably already know that. But people are just on the go nonstop. And they're taking you with them to the gym uh, when they're on the treadmill. They're listening to a podcast when they're in the car. I mean, my Enclave, my 2016 Buick Enclave, has Stitcher Radio built into it now, as most GM cars do, which carries podcasting on it. So they're, they, they can take you everywhere, all right? Um. Let's get back to the training here. A joint venture. It's a win-win. It's a joint venture with you and a little company called Apple. You've probably heard of them, okay? And podcasting can, can mean some serious money for you and your business. So let's take a look. What is it? What's a podcast? Well, the simple answer to that is it's an online radio show which people voluntarily subscribe to. The key word here, guys, voluntarily, Okay. Because there's no landing page with, uh, you know, red arrows pointing to an opt-in box where they're going to put their name and email in and then f the fear of God goes into them that you're going to market back to them and their email box is going to fill up with all this spam. No, all they do is they just simply 
let me just show you. Let me show you iTunes. Um, let me just go to my show here. <clears throat> right here. See this? It's a subscribe button right there. Uh, when they subscribe, you don't know that they've clicked this button. iTunes doesn't tell you how many subscribers of your show you have. You will see how many downloads of your show. All right, this number here that I was showing you here. And this number is provided through your podcasting hosting company, which I'll talk about as well. You don't host your podcast on your website. Your, your podcast also is not hosted on iTunes. Think of it this way, okay? iTunes is like Google, Yahoo, and Bing, but they have all their own content. They're their own search engine. For example, take a look up here. And if you have iTunes, you can open it up on your computer as well and search along with me. But I'm going to type in the keyword success. Simple keyword, real good one to rank for on the internet. Wouldn't you agree? And when you type it into iTunes, which millions and millions of people type into the search box every single day, you've got Zig Ziglar, Secret to Success a podcast, and there's my show there. All right. So when you, let me just, uh, it says go to webinar. Vin must be having it. Is everybody with me so far? Can you see me? Can you hear the screen? Or can you hear me, I mean, and see the screen? Okay, we have one person that was having a little trouble. Okay, all right, cool, all good. Uh, let me ask you so far, guys. We're 15 minutes into this. Is this interesting content for you? Are you finding this interesting so far? Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, cool. Hey, if you said no, Sam, stop it right now. Uh, then I would. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, guys, so let's keep going, all right? Hey, my goal is just to help you be a better marketer, that's all. Um, and I think you know that. If you've been on any of my webinars, you know. I'm going to try to sell you something at the end of this thing, so don't worry about that. I wouldn't be a good business person if I didn't. It's my podcasting course that I'm going to sell you at the end. And I want you to do it, and I want you to be successful. But let me also commit to you this. What you learn tonight, if you don't come on board and learn from me personally, you're going to know how to create a podcast. So it's going to be a win-win, okay? You're going to learn everything you need to know tonight. Okay, focus in on here, okay? You've got the word success. Type in a keyword that you want to play in, okay? Because mine is like motivation, inspiration, success, entrepreneur, keywords like that. Because once you type it into the iTunes search box, you've left the internet. Once you're inside of iTunes, there is no Google, Yahoo, Bing, anything like that. Everything that you are now going to see iTunes is going to be showing to you. Okay? Makes sense? So, how do you rank, though? I mean, what's the secret? If you want to be found inside of iTunes with your podcast, how do you even get ranked? Well, let me, let, let me give you a little bit of advice here and show you how to do this, okay? What I teach my students and what you will learn is a lot of how you are found has to do with the title of your show. You see how my show is titled there? Motivation, inspiration, success with entrepreneur coach Sam Crowley. So if so, someone's searching for motivation, for inspiration, for success, for entrepreneur, for the word entrepreneur coach, for my name, Sam Crowley, my show's going to come up. Okay, it's not always going to be first, not every time, but it's going to put me in a good position. All right. Next is going to be the number of subscribers, which you can't control until you get your show up there. You need to get your show up there. And I always tell my students, and this is inside my training as well, all right? When you come on board, you'll see exactly how to get ranked in this section here. Let me show you. I'm in the business section, okay? There's only 13 categories for a podcast. You've got arts, business, comedy, education, games and hobbies, government and organizations, health, kids and family, music, news and politics, religion and spirituality, science and medicine, society and culture, sports and recreation, technology, TV and film. All right, these categories. Now, you may be thinking, I don't know, man, my category really doesn't fit perfect. None of it. There's a there's a not a high likelihood you're going to find anything that fits perfect. OK, but for but for example, um, under health, there's subcategories under health, and those are alternative health, fitness and nutrition, self-help, 
That's me and sexuality. Now, in hindsight, maybe I should have set my show up under self-help. That's my second choice category, and I'll teach you when you come on board the training how to set up more than just one category because it gives you what? It gives you more opportunity to be found. So when you do launch your show, here's the what's hot section, okay? And you'll find your, 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 your show will be in here. The new and noteworthy section. What's the new and noteworthy section? The new and noteworthy section is where iTunes promotes your show for nothing. You don't have to pay anything. They recognize you as a new podcaster within the niche. They welcome you to the platform and they want to help you get started, which is awesome. I mean, this is a huge platform. So how do you show up in the new and noteworthy section? Well, again, there's no guarantee, but the strategies that I've found my students have had is A, they have album art, which is what you see right here. This is called album art. And it's nothing more than just going over to Fiverr and having somebody for $5 develop an iTunes album art for you, okay? B, have at least five shows in the hopper ready to go. Why do you want to have five shows in the hopper? Because if somebody listens to your first podcast and they love it, what are they going to do if you don't have any more? They're not going to subscribe. Why would they subscribe if you only have one podcast? If you have five ready to go right out of the gate and you upload them all, then they're going to be like, oh, I got to listen to podcast number two, but I don't have time right now. I mean, I can't sit here and binge on these four other ones, but I'll just subscribe. So when I get back online, it'll be right there waiting. So what happens when you gain a subscriber of your podcast? When you have a subscriber of your podcast every time you have a new show, they get a notification on their mobile device as well that you have a new show ready to be listened to. So getting back to this new and noteworthy, when you're a brand new podcaster, you would love to have momentum. And this gives you tremendous momentum to be featured. And there's a ton of them in here. It's not, they're just featuring here. You can see the first few, but here's the new and noteworthy, all of the, and this is just under the, what are we under the health category? Okay. All of these. And there's no substitute for momentum. I mean, Peter Drucker says there's two things a business needs. Every business needs is innovation and momentum. Well, you know what? iTunes is going to help you with momentum, and here it is. Okay? So a great title will help you. Album art will help you. Subscribers will help you. Okay? And having five shows will help you get into the new and noteworthy section. All right? So that's kind of a free bonus tip for you tonight to help you get momentum with your show. So let me get back into the slide here and cover what I was going to, there's new and noteworthy. <clears throat> it's all about the downloads, guys. Uh, the question came up early before we got started. I think it was Daryl who asked, how do I get sponsors? Maybe not. Maybe I'm mistaken. How do I, look, basically, how do I make money with my podcast? Everybody wants to know, hey, that's great, Sam. You're talking about being passionate, but how do I make money? Well, before you do anything, you got to learn how to create a good show because most of the shows on iTunes are terrible. All right. And why are they terrible? Well, for all the reasons that I just I just talked about, they don't do a regular show. They're very sporadic. Maybe they haven't done a show in six months. OK, they don't have album art, for example. Uh, the audio quality is terrible. There's really no rhyme and reason to it. They're just bad. OK, they just look bad. They sound bad. That won't be you, though. I'll teach you how to do it the exact right way every time. So you put your best foot forward and have a good time doing it. OK, now here's an interesting thing. Um, this is the iTunes platform in Poland, and there's my show number two. Uh, there's Italy, number three, and what's this? Uh, Germany uh, in the top 10 there, and you've got the UK. Now, where did I get these from? Well, here's an interesting thing, okay? Because you're not just drawing, you know, for example, in Poland, you're not just drawing, uh, if you live in the United States, listeners from the U.S. This is global. So if you take a look, if you open up your iTunes platform, I'm going to open this and go back to uh, the main page. See down here? Everybody see this American flag? Okay. I'm on the U.S. version of iTunes. <clears throat> which is standard. If you live wherever you live, this is the version, okay? But if I click on that flag, up comes all the different platforms for iTunes. 
So for example, um, if I wanted to see how many reviews I have specifically to, let's just say Australia, let's pick Australia, okay? Where's Australia? Oh, Australia is under Asia, so let's go to Asia. Asia Pacific, there's the Australian iTunes platform. I have 275 reviews on my podcast, but that's just in the US. Let's see what it says in Australia. Isn't this interesting? I mean, a lot of people don't know that this actually is uh, set up this way, okay? <clears throat> so I have 15 reviews in Australia, much less than 275. Same shows, they don't change. Here's the ratings and reviews. Um, the most recent one, best podcast ever. Michelle Sparks, Sam's a real deal. My life has changed. Vinny, excellent, motivating all walks of life. And great. And look, if I had a one star review, I would show it to you as well. Um, these just happen to be five stars, so I'm happy about that. But anyway, you can see where people, this is Australia. I'm going to go back to the United States, but you can kind of get an idea once your show goes up what are people saying about you and how many downloads are you getting in different countries and things like that. Pretty cool, isn't it? That, you know, there's people all over the world listening. And here's another question I get. Hey, Sam, uh, you know, I speak Spanish or I speak French or I'm not American. What if I. What if I don't speak English? That's great. <laughs> That's great because here's the thing. Remember, guys, when you click on a podcast, you're going to subscribe based on the message. Okay. So if you're not interested in tech, you're not going to subscribe. So if you speak French and somebody doesn't, they're not, don't worry. You're not going to, it's not like you're advertising to the wrong market. They will find you. Okay. If, Spanish, if they want to find a Spanish-speaking podcast, they'll just search for it, find you, and, and it'll all be fine. No problem. You don't got to worry about what language you speak. It'll all make, be matched up, okay? Now, there's a, there's a law, Milgram's Law. The marketplace will blindly believe the words of an expert. Now, Malcolm Gladwell says in his book that it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert. If it really did take 10,000 hours, I would have never made it in this business, guys. No way. I started podcasting, <clears throat> told everybody I was an expert, and just told myself, more importantly, I was the one that needed to know that I was an expert. It'll happen for you. Who should have a podcast? Women should have a podcast. Men! Anyone who can fog a mirror. I mean, if you talk, you better have a podcast. All right, examples of shows, and look, it's everything and everything, but brick and mortar stores, online businesses, consultants, information marketers, speakers, authors. There, there's no competition, guys. You know, think about it. It's just there's nobody out there doing what it is that, that we're doing. Uh, let me just see if the question came in. Charlene, what do you do with bad reviews more than one? Address it? No, I never address it. I actually have fun with it. I read them. I read all my reviews on my podcast and the I got to show you guys, man, since Charlene asked this, it says, this is the best review I've ever gotten. And I read it all the time. Well, not all the time, but I, I like to read this one on my podcast like once a month because it's just, it's just so awesome. Let me just see here. Uh, this is the UK. Okay. Here we go. Um, there is something desperately wrong with this man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, that describes me to a T, man. It does. <laughs> oh, anyway, have fun with it, Charlie. Look, it ain't. I'll tell you. Let me tell you something, man. If you ain't going to be everybody's cup of tea, all right? And that's A-OK, -okay. all right? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, here's the number of podcasts. I'm going to go fly. This is just data. Look, I'm, I'm flying through this. 39 million Americans listen to a podcast at least once a month. 33% of all Americans over the age of 12 have listened to a show. In 2006, the awareness of podcasting was only 22%. In 2015... That's more than doubled. Up, it, I'm sure it's over 50% by now, all right? 
There's approximately 250,000 podcasts in the iTunes directory and uh, representing over 100 countries and 40 different languages. For every 900 blogs online, there's only one podcast. And if you're female, that number is 3,500 to one. Okay, isn't that amazing? So let me ask you a question. What was the last blog post you read and who was the author versus you don't easily forget the name of the person with the voice? You know what I mean? So especially, I mean, guys, now is the time. I'm telling you, if you're not podcasting now or maybe you've done it sporadically here and there and you're looking to jump back in, there ain't no better time than right now. The market is hot. Ways to make money with your podcast. We had talked about this earlier. Advertisers and sponsors. You can do affiliate sales, meaning you can promote somebody else's product on your podcast and get paid for it. You just got to create a unique redirect link for that. You can do a joint venture, you know, which is similar to an affiliate deal. You uh, you team up with somebody, you you promote them, they promote you. Look, especially if you don't have a big mailing list, a great way to do joint ventures with individuals is to offer to interview them on your podcast in return for them promoting you and your product. Uh, there's coaching, speaking, audiobooks. And I say audiobooks. It Once you start podcasting, when you learn how to do it, every one of your shows can become a chapter of an audiobook. For example, let's say you want to do 10 tips to live in a vegan, healthy lifestyle, for example, okay? Each one of those tips, you can talk t seven to 10 minutes on, right? And that can be your podcast. You can also take those seven to 10 tips and turn that into seven to 10 chapters. Just map it out ahead of time and sell it on Audible as an audiobook. You can give it away for free as a lead generator on your website. You can sell it for a few bucks on Amazon. But the point being is it would take me forever to write a book. I've written a few, not a lot three or four, it would take me, you know, hardly no time at all to create an audiobook because I would just take all my podcasts and I would either expand upon the topic that I was talking about on my podcast or I would just simply just take the MP3 files and turn them into an audiobook. But there's a lot of different ways to monetize. All right. This is my funnel. Okay. So my funnel for my podcast looks like this. Okay. I send people from my podcast to social media. If I have a large ticket item, like $5,000 or more that I'm going to be selling from my podcast, I'll have them email me because that's a more serious client. What do I mean by social media? Well, I Twitter. I'm a big Twitter guy, okay? So if we take a look here, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always having people hit me up about podcasting, listen to the show, love the show, things like that. Uh, just found the Everyday Saturday podcast with Sam Crowley. Love it. <clears throat> and these are all people here that are sending me video. These are listeners to my show. Okay. Podcast, a secret to happiness. Let every situation be what it is, not what you think it should be. That was what I talked about. Uh, podcast review into my third month of acting class. I mean, so what, where I'm going with this, guys, I use Twitter as my main form of communication with my podcasting audience. They tweet me. I tweet them. I build an amazing relationship with them because I'm not selling. Okay? I'm not selling. But when I go to sell, how warm of a prospect do you think I'm dealing with? Okay? Very much so. So if you're just going to do a big call to action, you can do that on your podcast. I do it. You know, I, I, I had a podcast back in December. Let me just find this one for you. This one brought in $15,000 in two days. Okay. Um, let me see which one it was here. Um, uh, let me just see. Oh, the perfect client. Here it is. So I did this podcast and I had people email me if and put in the subject line, perfect client. I was searching. I still am searching for the perfect client, the perfect client to build a speaking business for, you know, and uh, because I build their entire podcast or their entire PowerPoint presentation, we build their message, we create their product. I mean, it, it's 10 hours of, of coaching and unlimited email and all of that. So I said, send me an email right here and put in the subject line, perfect client. And it was $7,500 to, uh, 
to come on board. It's three payments of $2,500 over the course of 90 days. And that week, two people signed up. So that was $15,000 in sales from just one 10-minute podcast. Why is that? Because it's the relationship you know, that you're building. These are the people that listen to you at the gym, at the park, while they're doing the dishes or vacuuming or picking up around the home, walking the pets. I mean, that's why they're going to send you $7,500 from a 10-minute podcast because you're with them everywhere they go. Does that make sense? I mean, it's a much better customer prospect than just a cold email on a list. Much, much better. I'll also send people to a landing page for a promo that I'm doing for myself or for somebody else if I'm doing an affiliate deal with somebody. I also always ask for a five-star rating request. <clears throat> Here's another hint, okay? If you want five-star ratings or just any star, I don't even care. I tell people, love the show, let me know. Hate the show, let me know, all right? But to get 275 ratings, you got to ask people. So how do you ask them? Just say, hey, I want to find great listeners like you. The show is built from people like yourself. So please go to Everyday Saturday. Go to, go to iTunes, I tell them. Uh, find the Everyday Saturday podcast. Leave a five-star rating. And if you leave a comment as well, I'll read it on my show. That's user engagement, guys. That's how you do it. You know what I mean? So that's how you build a great, great following. And that's how you sell a lot. You don't need a lot. You don't need you know, 1.5 million downloads to make a lot of money or to make a good income podcasting or to build a great audience. You just got to get going. Like my buddy Mike Lippman used to say, you don't got to get it right. You just got to get it going. All right. So these are some more Twitter feeds there, people shouting out. So this is my reality. I showed you that. I saved these pictures because I used to go to work with these guys every day. Now I share the stage with these guys. Tony Robbins, I taught their entire, maybe some of them are on the webinar today. They follow me online. The entire Tony Robbins coaching global organization hired me to coach them last year on podcasting. You know, And uh, I do this because I love to do it. And I want you to do it because I know how it's not only changed my life, but it'll, it will absolutely change your life. I have never seen someone get started with podcasting and stick with it that didn't have the time of their life doing it. And it didn't made a, and it, and made a significant impact on their business and on their personal life. Okay. So once you get going, once you make the commitment to podcasting, it absolutely will have a significant impact. It, it does all the time. Here's our, our podcasting uh, Facebook group. It's a private group. When you come on board a training program, you'll be inside of here. Eric posted the growth of podcasting. Phenomenal there. Uh, here it's, thank you, Sam. You're awesome. I just launched my show on Monday. This is uh, Monday, March 7th. I already have 400 downloads. I can't wait for my show to be in the new and noteworthy please subscribe. That's what we do inside our Facebook group. We subscribe to each other's shows and we give five-star ratings to help them out. Um, guys, this is, these are real, real testimony. Hey, there's Charlene. Awesome. Um, let me just see here. Here's new and noteworthy. Caesar uh, got in the new and noteworthy section. This is uh, Patrick is in the new and noteworthy section. It said, Sam, I found my podcast on new and noteworthy section. Thank you so much for all your help. I can't wait to continue to grow this. I've been podcasting for five days a week since two weeks ago. He just started, and I have 400 downloads. I can't contain myself. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please use me as a reference. Oh, I will, buddy. You don't got to worry about that. All right, so anyway, you get the picture. When you start talking, uh, you're going to have a great time, in, and you're going to make a significant impact with your audience, Okay. So right, who's fired up right now? Anybody fired up about podcasting? You still with me? Are you still hanging out? All right, cool. Cool. Capital letters. All right, you had to type in the caps to show you're still hanging out. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. You guys are awesome. All right, let me, let me show you something here. Um, <clears throat> back in, I don't know if you have any of these individuals on the line, but back in the... Uh, when I speak around the world, I teach podcasting. And in, in December, I spoke in Palm Springs in Orlando. And I sold a podcasting course for $1,000. And it was a four-week live webinar series. And I saved the recordings of that webinar series. Okay, And what it was, it was broken down. Each one was at least an hour long. And uh, it was 
the equipment. We haven't even talked about a lot of this, but equipment you need to use for podcasting, recording, building your MP3 files, using intros and extros, royalty-free music. That was all in week number one there. All right, basically how to record for free, all right, using Audacity and open office software, saving that MP3 file, and then uploading that to iTunes. That was week two, submitting your show to iTunes for approval. All right. So your show is live after this second webinar recording. You can watch them all tonight and your show will be live. I mean, just submit it to iTunes for approval. Won't be live tonight, but you'll be able to su submit it to iTunes. They approve it and you're good to go. All right. You just got to follow these very simple steps. All right. <clears throat> webinar number three was finding endless amounts of content for your show. Where to market your podcast to get more downloads, the recipe for a successful show, and where to find thought leaders for your podcast. Maybe you want to interview. Maybe you want to do an interview show and you just want to find all the great content for people. Okay? So uh, that was week number three. And then w webinar number four was monetizing, show me, show me the money, how to make money with my podcast. And then I put some bonus videos down in here as well how to upload a podcast without a website, installing WordPress and things like that. But if you, when you go through this very simple webinar series, you're gonna, your show's gonna be live on iTunes and you're gonna be the next testimonial inside our Facebook group saying, thank you so much. This was amazing, okay? And so anyway, I wanna offer you that tonight. I wanna offer you an opportunity to get going and do this the right way. All right. I want you to do it the right way. I'm going to give you this entire presentation that everybody paid a thousand bucks for uh, at the end of 2000. I, I did the training in January, two months ago. It was a four week online webinar series and I saved the recordings. What I also want to give you is I want to give you access to Podcast House, which is 80 video tutorials over and above that training. They're, 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 I chunked it down, three to five minute videos all about different topics uh, that has to do recording, show formats, interviewing people, where to find content, intros, uh, similar to what we did on the webinar, but these are chunked down. So if you learn better in just three to five minute videos and you want to work, learn WordPress in less than an hour, for example, here's a screen grab of what some of the videos look like. Um, social media promotion, getting your show on iTunes. Uh, if you wanted to just watch the four live webinars, that's fine. You're good to go. That's great. There's, you don't need to do anything more. If you want to combine the knowledge with Podcast House, I'm going to throw that in. And again, there's four sections, how to construct your show, cultivate it, convert it, and then crush it. Okay. And then um, <laughs> I say bull crap. It doesn't take 10,000 hours to become an expert. Allow me to show you how huge paydays are possible. All right. Here's a special offer for tonight. Everybody, you'll get launched with your podcast, okay? Not only are you going to get access to the webinar recordings, you're also going to get access to our private Facebook group, all right? So you can get inside there, ask questions of all of our graduates in there, as well as myself. I'm in there monitoring the Facebook group. You're also going to get access to these, the four live webinar recordings and the bonus recordings as well. You're going to get uh, Periscope Power, which is, uh, if you're not on Periscope, I, I actually record my show um, on Periscope. Whoop, let me get back in there. It booted me out. I actually will do this while that's coming back up. See this little, that's my iPhone right there. And I'll stream my podcast live while I'm recording it, which is pretty cool. Again, great stuff for user engagement. You know, you can't do this in a blog post. You just can't. Here's the Periscope training, how to install it, uh, setting it up configuring your broadcast, using the perfect title for your scopes, the nine different types of broadcast, picking the perfect time, how to properly interact with your viewers, save and publish your scopes online, and then use trending hashtags to expand your audience. Again, another touch point for building this. If you're a speaker, like I know we have a lot of speakers on here, this is a great uh, tutorial for you, okay? And I'll take you inside my studio. I'll show you, that's the Blue Yeti mic that I'm using right now on this webinar. Speaking of webinars, I'm going to give you the profitable webinar blueprint, video, and transcripts on how to host your very own webinars. I'm going to give you another bonus in there, YouTube marketing, an ebook, resource guide, cheat sheets, and a mind map to your own YouTube marketing plan. So to review, you're going to get access to Podcast House, to the four live webinars, 
the entire VIP package. All right. You can start literally as soon as you down as soon as you make the payment at podcasthouse.com. All of this, guys, for $297. I also have a two pay plan available. When you go to podcasthouse.com, you're going to be sent to this page right here. You can choose one payment of $297 or two payments of $172. As soon as a payment's made, you're going to you're going to have access to all of this content. All of it. Okay. My suggestion would be to get started with the four webinar recordings. That way you can start right at week number one and create your own audios. And I show you inside that training how to create the best audio, not average. Nobody wants to be average. Average shows don't get huge downloads, okay? You want to create the best podcast. So if you want to have the best podcast and you want to put your best foot forward, and you really want to tap into this medium while it's still hot, and I mean it is hot, then go ahead and sign up. All right, and when you sign up, send me an email, sam at everydayasaturday.com. Let me know you signed up so I can add you to our private Facebook group and welcome you inside, okay? So let me do this. While I still got the screen up and we're still hanging out here, I want to be respectful of your time. After you sign up, if we're still live on the webinar and you're signing up now, let me know. Just type it into the question box that you're signing up so I can acknowledge you on the live webinar as well. And let's do some Q&A, okay? What Q&A, any questions uh, anybody have, I'm happy to stay on, answer them. Anything about podcasting, whatever you got, fire it out there. Thank you, Charlene. This is a great deal, Sam. Thank you so much. As always, I appreciate you being on. Thank you. Do you have to have Apple devices? You know, that's a great question, Teresa. No, you don't. You don't have to have any Apple devices. Even if you're on a PC and iTunes is not installed on your computer, you simply go to iTunes.com and you download it from there. You don't need an iPhone. You don't need anything. All right. And uh, I'll show you when you come on board the training exactly how to record your show without any Apple devices. And it's going to be just as good as somebody that does. Oh, where can you host your podcast? Okay, that's a great question. <clears throat> it's a great question, Christopher. Let me show you week number one of the training. Do I have it up here? Ch -ch 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 -ch. Is it week one or week two? It might be week two. Let me pull up that PowerPoint here. I saved my PowerPoints on my computer here. Bear with me, Christopher. I'm going to answer your question here in a, in a visual way. Let me just see here. Podcast hosting, iTunes. This is all part of the training. I'm trying to see if I had a visual. Um, all right, let's try this one and see. Okay, I use Blueberry, okay? So when you, hit, when, when you set up your podcast hosting, okay, Blueberry will give you your first month free when you use Saturday as the promo code, by the way. But I'll get into that in a second. Blueberry hosts your podcast, Christopher. iTunes takes what's called the podcast feed. It's a URL to an RSS. Don't let that fool or mess with your head or anything. It's a little techie speak. But basically, RSS is a technology for announcing updates to a website. To publish a podcast in iTunes, you must, you must first set up a website that generates an RSS feed, which is simply your hosting company can give you that RSS feed. You don't need a quote-unquote website. Very simple to do. When you, up, when, when you update that podcast, the RSS feed notifies iTunes that a new episode is available. So all of these shows, as soon as I upload a new show to my hosting company, Blueberry, they iTunes is pinged. They're notified. Hey, Sam Crowley's got a new show. Let's pull that feed, and that's how it appears in real time. Okay. Well, not real time. There's a little bit of a delay. Sometimes it's 15 minutes. Some, sometimes it's a couple hours. Okay. How much is hosting? That's probably a question somebody has, I would imagine. So let's take a look at that. Um, go back to Blueberry for a second. That's Blueberry without the E's, by the way. B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. That's my recommendation for hosting. Uh, podcast hosting, order now. Um, I would recommend starting at this $12 a month level. Okay? Gives you 100 meg, which is about 100 minutes of audio. Give or take. All right, don't hold me. That's about 100 minutes of audio. 
Um, and it's a 30-day rolling calculation. So after 30 days, everything that's 31 days or older doesn't count against your hosting. Okay. Uh, if you type in Saturday as your promo code, apply. Running a little slow because I'm also running go to meeting or go to webinar rather, and a thousand other windows are open right now. It's gonna it's gonna show a zero first of all. All right, that's why I said use that promo code. So that's what <clears throat> I'd recommend. Okay, uh, Daryl, this is still clocking out. How much is required for hardware to get started? Not much, you know. Look, here's what I'd recommend um, for a microphone. If you just want to get started, I'd recommend a Logitech headset, okay? I don't know why that's clocking out there. Let me get done with that before it blows up my computer. Let me show you what to use here. One of these guys here, uh, 26 bucks. This is what I would buy here. Logitech Clear Chat Comfort USB headset. Okay. That's what I would use. It's very inexpensive. It plugs into your USB port and you can get rocking and rolling. As far as recording, I use Audacity, which is a free uh, open office software that you can, I've been using it for over 10 years now to record my audio books as well as my podcast. All right. You plug your headset into your USB port, you fire up Audacity and you export an MP3 file. And that's it. Teresa, I accidentally uh, deleted your question. I'm not sure. Why Blueberry over Libsyn? You know, that's a great question, Rick. Every, a lot of people were promoting Libsyn when I went to Blueberry. I just, you know why I did it is the customer support. And I can tell you, man, I got these guys on speed dial via email. When any of my clients ever have a question, I email them. When they have a question, they email them. They get back like Johnny on the spot. And I'll tell you what, there's just no substitute for that. I, with For a guy like me that gets 102, 150,000 downloads a month, I can't have my show going down. And I relied on it to you know earn income and put a message out. I Customer service is 100%, 10 out of 10 to me. That's why I choose Blueberry. And look, I'm sure Libsyn's fine. People probably, I've just, when I was doing my research, I just felt better about Blueberry. And for a couple of years now that I've been using them, I made the switch, could not be happier with the customer service. I think cost, you're going to find they're, I think most are the same. You know, Blueberry has a plugin uh, that they use. It's called the PowerPress plugin that plugs into WordPress. I'll show you how to use that as well when you get started. Uh, that's where you get all your statistics from as well. So, um, Let's see. Uh, finally took my website down and no hosting provider starting all over again. Any recommendations? I would use the Blueberry. Yeah, Blueberry for hosting. And if you want to integrate it with WordPress, um, absolutely do that. Yeah, that's what we'll teach on the training as well. You probably already have access to that, though, Charlene, just integrating that with uh, WordPress. Yeah, it'll be available next week. Sure. Just go back, just save the URL. Go to podcasthouse.com, okay? Save the URL, and that's where you'll be. Let me get uh, back to where we are here. Okay, cool. All right. Rick, question. Do you use Skype if and when you invite guests? I do use Skype. And when I also use a piece of software called Ecamm, E-C-A-M-M, -M. and Ecamm records all of your Skype calls as a video file, and then they have a little uh, trick where you can uh, ex uh, export that as an MP3 file. You just drop it into, I think I actually still have it open because I just did a Skype call. Let me Hold on one second, let me see. Of course, my desktop looks just not, see this here? What happens is, uh, convert to MP3. This is part of Ecamm that they give you when you purchase the software. It's like 30 bucks, but it records every one of your Skype calls as a video. And you take that video file and you just drag and drop it. Like right here <clears throat> is desktop. Let me go to this. Look here. See the saved calls here? These MP4s, you would just drag, drop it in there. I'm not going to do it right now. It'll take, and then that converts it into a mp3 and that's it so when you do an interview that's how you turn it into an mp3 file all 
All right. This informative, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you were able to learn more than you knew prior to jumping on the webinar. That would be important. And uh, I want to see you inside the training. That would be great, too, to get your show launched. Because when you do, uh, you're going to feel it, man. You're going to feel it. You're going to definitely get yourself out there, get the downloads going, get the new customers and prospects. And it's just, I'm telling you, man, it's a, there's no better way in my mind to build a brand. There just isn't. So if you have any other questions, you can fire them my way. Sam at everydayissaturday.com. I want to welcome everybody who signed up. I see the orders that have come in so far. Congratulations. I welcome you inside the training. You'll have your login, email, and password. You can get going tonight. We can start tomorrow morning. But just get started. Okay? Uh, thanks, everyone. It's been great. We're going to get you right out of here in under an hour. And uh, I will see you all uh on the internet where <laughs> we all spend our time right and of course make sure you subscribe to the number one motivational podcast on the planet the everyday saturday show all right guys have a great day we'll see you later now